emergency line. All our operators are busy, so please stand by. Yeah, it's a recording. Let me have that. We said all our operators are busy, so please stand by. Yeah, intro. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> we, hello, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Artstream Live. It's our April the eleventh, two thousand and fifteen webisode. Mm -hmm. Already. <laughs> Already. Okay. <laughs> and uh, just a tip of the hat to all you folks. We got that wonderful day coming up, mid month, that we all look forward to. Brought to you love. courtesy We're, of Uncle Sam. We what? can all pay our fair share. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. we'll have a little thing at the end for that. But uh, yeah, we. We've got a special topic tonight, mm -hmm. uh, a deep question. How deep? Well, I think you're going to like this one, Charles. Oh, you know the I question like is, do artists cheat when they make artwork? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let me think about that. Let I, knew, I knew you'd <laughs> like that one. Some artists are all artists. Well, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. In fact, uh, we've got a special... Why don't we start off with, uh, you know, to do a little book review, maybe? Oh, you want to do a book yeah, review? Yeah, let's start yeah. with a book review, and okay. that'll kind of lead us into the subject well, here's, tonight. Here we go. Ah. Shh, go. Okay. Ooh. All right. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, I've got a special book tonight. Kind of deals with that. Um, this is a book by David Hockney. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't review them unless I've read them, so I do try to do there that. There it is. So the, actual the actual book. book. Don't give me out any bad information. <laughs> but the, the premise behind the book is called Secret Knowledge, Rediscovering the Lost Techniques of the Old Masters. And I've got some graphics we can bring up that will help show and a little bit, but uh, we'll start off. I think Hockney raised several hackles with that yeah, book. Yes, he, he did. Yeah. And there's some information on the book right there on that little yeah. title beginning. You know, who, who published it and everything, all that good information right there for you. If you're interested in the book, it is available at Amazon.com. But uh, it did raise some hackles. And the, the idea behind it is um, David Hockney mm -hmm. had been looking at some drawings by Ingress. And nearby he had had a drawing of an Andy Warhol, which I've got a graphic if you'll bring it up, I'll let folks okay. see it. And uh, it, what he noticed when he kind of had the two drawings close together, yeah. the Andy Warhol drawing was projected and traced. Mm -hmm. And he was looking at the line quality of the drawing, and he noticed the same line quality in the other drawing. Mm -hmm. The shadows had been outlined. There was no sketchiness. Every mark was like he'd never had to search for it. Yeah. It all went right in place, and it wasn't a large drawing. So he started to wonder if it was possible that uh, Ingress had used some type of hmm. lens device mm -hmm. to help him make the drawing. So that got him going and thinking more and more about it. And if you bring that next graphic up, we'll look at that. But, you know, David Hockney, he's a printmaker, an artist, stage designer. He's done photography. So he's done a lot of different mediums. He was quite familiar with photography. So what he did, he took a wall in the studio, and this is a big, long wall. Big wall. Like, yeah, 14 feet high by 30 <laughs> feet, 40 feet long. And went through and got images of paintings yeah. running through this time period. And you've got the time periods up there listed. And so I started looking at them and looking for telltale signs that he, being an artist, he had a visual advantage maybe over an academic mm -hmm. historian 
Because not only has he studied art, he's made it. And you know, being an artist, sometimes you see how things go together a little bit more clearly. Mm -hmm. And it started him thinking about that he believes that optical lenses were used earlier, farther back in time than historians think. Mm -hmm. And he believes they were actually using lenses or convex uh, mirrors. And he's got some interesting proofs for that. Like, bring up that next slide. We'll, we'll kind of discuss well, Another way bit. to get an image like that, right. too, is, is a pinhole camera. A pinhole which camera. Which may go back further than they and thought, that, too. And it does. And, and that, this is part of what he found when he started looking at how mm -hmm. the human figure was painted and portrayed. You know, you run from the 1300s up toward the mm -hmm. 14, and he noticed within a 100-year shift, it's like art becomes overnight photographic. Mm -hmm. And it never, he, he wondered, what happened? What caused this to happen in the degree of such fine detail realism over such a short period of time? And like David mentioned, the idea of a pinhole camera, simple idea, been around mm -hmm. a long, long time. A long you time. Put a pinhole in a piece of cardboard, you can focus the sun on the mm -hmm. sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And that's actually, uh, the camera obscura is where that term came from, which and I, this is mm -hmm. one of those little footnotes I like to share. Did you know <laughs> that camera obscura, camera is Latin for room, hmm. and obscura is dark, so it's like a dark, dark room. room. Right, that's where dark the term room. came from. And, and that was one of the things you could do is actually have a pinhole and light would come in and project an image on the opposite wall in reverse. Mm -hmm. And he believes that the artists were putting up paper and tracing these off. Mm -hmm. So that's caused a little bit of a hubbub in the art world because, now he's not saying they couldn't draw. Mm -hmm. No, and he's well, not, it's not the quality of the art. And some people yeah, think it's artists. cheating, you know, but he's saying that he felt like they were just using a tool, mm -hmm. and why wouldn't they use a tool that they had available to them? Right. And simple lenses could do the same thing. He believes they might have used convex mirrors, and, and if we'll bring up that next slide, I've kind of got, well, actually that last one. Okay, go back to that last this one. one. Yeah, that one. Down yeah. there in the middle bottom, that's mm -hmm. actually out of a painting by Van Eck. It's called the Ar Ar Arnofuni Wedding, the mm -hmm. Marriage. Famous painting, but on the back wall, there's a painting, uh, he painted a mirror. Mirror, yeah. It shows the figure from behind. Mm -hmm. And see, for the time period, that, that lets us know those mirrors were back there. They, mm -hmm. they existed. And he believes all they had to do was coat the inside of that mirror, and it would have been a convex mirror, which would have focused light. And if you've ever looked at a poor quality mirror mm -hmm. from a distance, mm -hmm. it doesn't take much in in perfection in the surface to cause a big distortion. Right. So if they had mirrors that you could be that far away from and still have a readable image, mm -hmm. it was a very sophisticated mirror mm -hmm. for the time, much more than they, they thought at the time. I think another thing that uh, may uh, support Hockney's theory mm -hmm. is that uh, many of the artists back then, including Vermeer, they've never run across many drawings that he ever did. No. There are no, no rough sketches, no thumbnails. And that's true for Caravaggio, mm -hmm. too, because they, they, they don't have preliminary drawings, but they do know that he would actually take the end of his brush and make imprints into the paint like he was marking an area. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing you brought up that, that Hockney brings up that he thinks helps validate the idea of them using uh, photographic means. They just didn't have the chemicals or the paper or the film, mm -hmm. but they had the lenses. And uh, that last image had what they call that Lucida, right. which is another uh, tool that artists use. It's a little bit later. You're mm -hmm. right, the camera obscura goes way back. It right. goes far back. And this is a little bit more of an interesting device that uses mirrors and lenses. And the artist looks directly through it at the paper underneath and sees the reflection of what, he, yeah. what he's looking you at. Can and he can still buy them. You can still, still make buy them. them. Yeah. You can make your own, right? right? You can make them. In fact, Mother Earth News had a great yeah. article uh -huh. on how to make one out of wood and plexiglass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when they do that, they, they flip in the image is, is, is done uh, opposite. Mm -hmm. Right. If you look at that, everybody's looking towards the right. Right. So do that flip it. Well, they could have flipped it, that's true. A lot of artists, where you see them, they're painting towards the left side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, no, the Lucida has a mirror that flips it and a lens, so it's automatically corrected. Yeah. Whereas, you're right, a camera obscura will flip it upside mm -hmm. down. Mm-hmm. It flips the image over. Upside down and left to right. Right. And so they can't does. change it if they... But once you have the drawing, you could use that drawing to help you, and you do transfers. 
So mm-hmm. artist, that's what Kunarist in about the idea he had behind it. And he looked at a lot of paintings and a lot of images. He actually has done a lot of this on his own. He's used the camera obscura. In fact, I think the next slide may have an image of him where he's actually working. Well, now it's coming. <laughs> yeah, it's up there. It's up there. I'm sorry. I think it's yeah, up there at the, the top. top. Right. Yeah. And, top right. Uh, and what he started to do, he met a gentleman by the name, I've got to get his name, Charles Falco. And he's a, an American physicist and etic, uh, expert in optical lenses and optics. Mm-hmm. And he worked with David and, and went through these ideas of these paintings. And I mean, they looked at a lot of work for telltale signs. What they were looking for, they knew what lenses do, how they distort. Like an image will be different in the middle and the edges mm-hmm. through a lens. They would look for that. Parallax. They would, yeah, they would look for shifts in perspective. Mm-hmm. And so they, the more they look, the more they found visual evidence to back up. Like you can tell, like certain figures where they had uh, the figure had moved and the hand mm-hmm. might be a little bit off mm-hmm. because they had to position. Because you know when they used these, they didn't have film to freeze it, so the mm-hmm. model had to hold still. Also, you get extreme foreshortening with a camera. Right, you would get extreme yeah. foreshortening. So all these things, I think he's got a valid point. I mm-hmm. find it fascinating theory. Some people are offended. Some art historians are feeling, well, you're saying the old masters cheated. They're cheaters. <laughs> and no, he's not He's not claiming that. He's saying they had an advantage of a tool. Use the tool. They used the but tool. did they mention that as a tool? Uh, well, uh, that's uh, uh, part, well, see, that's part of the argument. That's part of the, the argument. Speech. That's part of the but, argument. But, so they was going it, around right. for centuries saying these guys was doing freehand. But no, it, at the time, at, at, at Vermeer's time, we don't know this. It could have been just common knowledge and nobody talked about it because they knew about it. Yeah. It wasn't a school. I mean, of we don't talk about digital projectors now or computers much yeah. in, in making of artwork. It's just the artwork. But we will. But we will. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, okay, it's like it's, if you study, you know, I, I did a lot of serigraphy, screen printing. One of the things I found out through the history of it is when it started, it started in sign shops. Mm-hmm. It was top secret. They didn't tell people what they were doing because they were producing quicker. Mm-hmm. They had a market advantage. They didn't want people to know what they were doing. Mm-hmm. And for a long time, it was hush hush. They almost had like union groups. If you told, you got kicked out. <laughs> and, and the word finally started getting out. Artists would work there and go, hey, I can make art with this. And the word finally got well, out. Well, if that went to their advantage where they right. had an ace in a the hole, then why would you spread it? Where you would have an, uh, uh, an apprentice come in, he could automatically knock you out. No, they were probably mm-hmm. sworn to secrecy upon well, they death. Had, you know? They had the yeah. guild structure and yeah. being part of it. So, uh, yeah. But With uh, the guild thought, structure they could control. So. Right. It's a, it's a great book. And a lot of images, a lot of color images. Mm-hmm. Pretty good sized book. But it's quite a, a interesting tale how he goes through. And what I enjoy about it is that the fact that David has painted stage design, photography. He's mm-hmm. done a lot of visual things. And like I said, he worked with an expert in optics. So I think he's got a strong basis for the premise. And I thought that would be something fun to share on our theme tonight. Do mm-hmm. artists cheat? It's depending on your point of view. Mm-hmm. I, you know. Well, it's according to what you're selling. I mean, if you right. got a client and you tell them you're doing this freehand and that's what they buy into, and then come to find out that it was uh, projected, I mean, that sort of killed the whole artistry. But that's an individual call. Right, it's an individual call. And uh, the thing, and, and even we'll get further into it, the idea even even Van Gogh used a personal frame grid that he had made. It was a wood frame with strings or something mm-hmm. metal or bar stretch that he would hold up like a grid to help him mm-hmm. position figures and work out his perspective. Well, one of yeah. our professors in college yeah. basically invented a small version of that. I still have it. I should mm-hmm. have pulled it out for this. But it's about four inches square piece of plastic and it has a grid on it, and right. it has it has uh, like a protractor markings on it for angles. So you can hold it up and look through it. Then you look at your drawing or painting, mm-hmm. and you can transfer mm-hmm. with that. Well, it's, I look at it's, it. It's, it's more sophisticated yeah, than your thumb. It's just a tool. <laughs> and the key is, I think, for an artist, is do you control the tool, or does it control you? Mm-hmm. If it controls you, you got a problem. But, you know, he's not saying they well, couldn't draw. It depends on whose perspective. If you're looking right. at a postmodern perspective, that's not a problem either. That's true. That's true. I mean, anything goes then. There's that's no, right. so it wouldn't not be anything that would be cheating. Right. 
Uh, so it depends on how you want to define what art is. Mm -hmm. So that's part of our topic tonight. Do artists cheat when they make art? So I thought that would be fun. And uh, I guess that can lead us right into our topic. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, something we talked about, like here's an interesting Here couple of devices recorded by Albert Dewar. And that one on the top left is actually a grid that the artist is looking through. And if you notice, mm -hmm. he's got a, a, a point of view marker that he always comes back to and looks at the same point yeah, that so sticks. And yeah. so his eyes lined up to that grid exactly the same place every time. And he uses mm -hmm. that grid to help him. Like he's working out there a foreshortening problem mm -hmm. with the human figure. And using that grid helps him map that out to be more accurate. And a whole other device further in the bottom uh, right corner down there, that's, that's a pretty complicated little device mm -hmm. with a hinge panel to mark the exact <laughs> point of line. They, they use a string for line of sight, touch the object, take it back to where the artist is, and mm -hmm. use that swinging door to mark that point. <laughs> That'd take a while to do a drawing of that. <laughs> Yes, it would. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of the devices that, that you know that artists have used, and then literally, like we talked about, camera obscura, mm -hmm. dark room. They literally were rooms mm -hmm. that were built, and it's just like walking into a gigantic pinhole camera. Well, it seems uh, I remember when we were in college. I never saw it, but uh, I was told about a, a very extremely large camera, projection camera. That mm -hmm. was on the Berkeley complex. Soon after, uh, after the university would, got that property, and it had been a, um, I think a billboard company at one time. But they left behind this hmm. uh, projection camera that could project a image 30 by 40 feet, right. and uh, we never got to use it. Yeah. <laughs> would have been fun. But, I know uh, they call them in a commercial art. They call them Lucy's, a mm -hmm. bigger bellow type cameras they use. But, you know, they literally were, and, and then, of mm -hmm. course, you had to have outside light. Weather conditions would have affected if a cloud rolled by and mm -hmm. messed up your view. But they could get pretty good images upside down. And then you get into that, the, the, the camera Lucida, which I say is a little bit more elaborate. But they know mm -hmm. artists were using these devices. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a tool. But they'll have examples of landscape drawings. And they're I just so, like I said, the, the way they're outlined... Let you know there was some kind of projection. Yeah. Well, I I agree with with, with Hockney that mm -hmm. that uh, probably more historic we'd consider historical art was aided in some form mm -hmm. uh, than we realize. Yeah, they looked at everybody. They looked at Rembrandt. They looked you know, at they, Well, right there's there. this they romantic idea of the artist sitting in the countryside with nothing but one brush and his little flimsy little easel, mm -hmm. his French easel, and uh, coming back with this photorealistic drawing, mm -hmm. painting of a landscape. And that just didn't happen. Right. I mean, it just didn't happen. <laughs> but it's it's a part of the way people think about art. Even artists think about mm -hmm. it that way. You know, what about, okay, what about the idea of just tracing? Yeah. You Tracing's know. been used... Uh, re uh, yeah. Renaissance. They use tracing to, to put up the... Big drawings, they enlarge their drawings to yeah, put them up for the big and, um, and transfer mode of frescoes. Canvas, yeah, right. or the big frescoes they did. Now, some people might consider the Sistine that. Chapel. Now you know, I I read a uh, interesting blog artist were talking about tracing, and one of the art instructors said that no, I never have my students trace because I do want them to start mm -hmm. off trying to learn how to see properly. You know, and 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 use their hand eye coordination mm -hmm. and look at something, and I agree with that. It's a tool. Like I said, you don't want to become dependent on the tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so a like, tool after the fact. Once you learn the technique, right. Right. then you can go and add to it. Right. But if you're just sitting around doing nothing but tracing, if all you, you don't, don't have a skill, trace, you'll never be able to draw. Right? Yeah, so, you're not going to be able to right. take it out. So the, it begs the question, are digital artists artists? Well, we'll get to that, too. And but, we, get, we get into a little well, sticky I wicket could, there. I could say, I could say <laughs> yes, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But... Uh, <laughs> But uh, here's but the, some other the examples. Next. Right now, our, our class. Well, I remember modern. that one on the right. Oh yeah, the oh, old boy. classic opaque projector. And it, it was olive drab <clears throat> army <Yeah>. surplus. <laughs> Trying to get one of those to show uh, a sharp focus was always fun to do. Mm -hmm. But you know, anybody that's ever done commercial art, you'd be familiar. Well, that's with what that. I was going to yeah. say. The first, yeah. very first uh, semester in commercial art, that's what you used. That was right. it. That was your starting point. 
And I know, Charles, I know you're a 3D man. Mm -hmm. Although I know you've worked in 2D, which we've shown also. I've got something mm -hmm. coming up for you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Did I do it? We well, haven't we yet. Oh. All right. Well, you know, we're talking about how, how the artists keep making art. Well, here's the, here, here's the digital. Here's where it started. Yeah, but, you know, you got your famous Photoshop. But one thing about digital, I will say, and a lot of young people, my daughter being one included, they all have mm -hmm. the drawing pads now. Right. So they are drawing. Mm -hmm. And they're using the pads. But what's interesting about this is that you can use the pad, but tie it into software. And some of the software will firm up your lines. It'll make the lines perfectly curved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can enhance your drawing with the software. It will, it will style your drawings. Yeah, yeah, it'll do that. But, so. you, you, but you still got to have that skill level because the software is still tied into the plug. It's got to have once you that, fit Once to, that software right. is out. Mm -hmm. Right. You still, well, you still have to know what you want in the image. True. You have well, to get there. That's if you're doing the drawing as an input. Yeah. But what if you're just taking photos and manipulating them? You get into more of a collage aspect, you know. Yeah, collage is a yeah another one. But here's one for Charles. <laughs> what about the idea of 3D printing? You want to talk about cheating? Hey, it's possible to 3D why print. Why can we take we could take a Charles Smith pottery, 3D scan it, mm -hmm. and run it through a printer and start printing them out? Yeah. But my biggest thing with the technology is that if it's if it's done where you got a wall plug, if the thing could some way if it was solar and it runs forever, yeah. But once it's tied to the wall, oh, yeah. then you gonna run into a problem. Yeah, the power grid goes down. Yeah, the, the power grid right. goes, yeah. and we 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 right back. But in the thinking part and execution part, you could do it forever. Well, if if a Renaissance artist ran out of food, his fuel's gone too. Well, it's saying we want that. That's not applied to anybody, but I know that. But, but we're talking about the actual thinking process right. and 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 mm -hmm. doing. I don't know. Human that. element. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you if you an artist and your whole thing is tied to that grid, mm -hmm. you got a problem. Well, we do. I mean, the whole modern world's tied to the grid. Well, that's true. Well, then I, I mean, mean try, if try it, to live two days without it. Hey, Charles, how's that electric film gonna run? <laughs> well, see, I can always go back and uh, dig a hole. Yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm right back to square one. You could, that's but true. do you have a square one here? No, I don't think there were many candle powered or camera obscuras. No, uh, no, I don't. But they did use the sunlight, which you'd have to be dot during the day. You could use You're it during the day. Well, so you go into digital camera, and then you get to the point that well, then anybody and everybody can be an artist. Then all you got to do is just curious. steal an image. Well, that's why mm -hmm. the, the definition of art is so difficult now. Yeah, because. I read an article about digital cameras, and, mm -hmm. and the cameras actually take such good pictures now, they almost take the pictures themselves. That's so true. what you're basically left with is composition. That's the last yeah, decision-making process. It up, right? right. But you decide to take a picture of and how it's framed in the frame. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's been a real problem for people mm -hmm. who uh, are pho photographers and do shows exhibiting for a living yeah. we well, you know what because people yeah. can walk down the aisle and literally say i took a picture it looks just like that and how can you keep your edge <laughs> if say i come up with something then i put it out it's mm -hmm. out in the public mm -hmm. arena they mm -hmm. all of a sudden mm -hmm. they got it appropriate i lost my mm -hmm. edge just that fast mm -hmm. so you always got to be ahead of the game right to try to figure something right. out because you, you know it can last for maybe well, uh, the thing that uh, the art photographer has that the amateur doesn't is consistency. The amateur may, you know, hit upon a really good mm -hmm. photograph once in a while. But he got to keep watching you because mm -hmm. you changing and he got to go with oh, your change. I got but a his, quote coming up that'll cover this. Oh, oh yeah. Wait. Okay. You know, <laughs> well, don't bring it up yet because, you know, Dave brought a good point. Tonight we really he talked about do artists keep more from a technical aspect. Maybe in an upcoming episode we can talk about the concept. Behind, mm -hmm. they're behind the, when you're before you get into the technical aspect, do the artists keep before they even get you know? How about galleries and <laughs> it's well, how we can well, get it's a whole bad. other area how there? How desperate? <laughs> well, see, <laughs> there there is on, on, a, on a large scale, there can be cheating in the marketing of art. Well, why and not only just for the artist, but for the people who market for well, him. That could be a whole other episode. Well, we man. see that. It, it, it looks I like mean, it looks like art, but is it just paper? Well, well, that's what that's we get true. into. 
Well, bring up those quotes, Dave. These are if a blank, from, uh, if a blank canvas is art, then a blank piece of paper is. Hey, blank white canvas has been art. I right? know. That's what I mean. Well, I thought these would be a couple <laughs> fun quotes. You know, you got this one. You want to read that for them there? Drawing is the honesty of the art. There is no possibility of cheating. It's either good or bad. Salvador Dali. Well, Dali. He, he, uh, did he live long enough to find out that? Well, we can tell him a little cheating well, he might have done. Yeah, I mean, he, in his, it, the thing with his signature, I mean, it's... That's he had other people signing it. That people was buying into it. That's what I'm that's saying. Part that's part of the marketing. cheating. That's part of the marketing. That's another episode coming up. Yeah. Right, I, like, I love this quote, though. I had to put this one in there. Yep. Everybody knows this one. Yep. The bad artist imitate, the great artist steal. Steal. Sure. Well, nothing wrong with but stealing. No, see, it's not. Because the rest of that sentence, they steal and make it their own. Mm, right. right. But some people don't know how to do that. If you steal the whole unit, then you steal it. Well, and you know, and you can tell good artist would pick out mm -hmm. some aspect of that. The good part of it. Whatever benefit <laughs> him. I mean, but and they know what, and they would know how to manipulate. Well, you know, mm -hmm. when a thief breaks in your house, he just wants to make what's yours his own. Right. Yeah, but <laughs> I understand because he didn't just steal; he made it better. You know, artists were afraid to show them you, what they were working on because they knew yeah. he'd take it in an hour, he'd have more <laughs> out of it than they did. Yeah, but how can you, <laughs> uh, if you put it out for public consumption? Well, you can't. How can you hold to it and say the guy is stealing? You put it out there, put it and out no there. one artist going to be influenced by it. We do gravitate yeah. to things that we like, and we got this mental image, and we're going to take it. Now, it takes you years to understand that you're really stealing something. you got to come to grips with yourself. <laughs> you know what you said? That, okay, yeah, I stole that. Confession People say, well, you, well yeah, they you were, were saying, well, you were influenced by it. You were inspired by it. Well, yeah, but I stole it. I like it, so now we're dealing with commerce. Yeah, but you made it yours. Right. Yeah. you you got to know how to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's different. That's called appropriation. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, but, you know, talking about things uh, coming up that can't be stolen or special, mm -hmm. I do want to mention a little something that's going to be happening in June. Oh, ah, yeah. It's long overdue. Yeah. The Baltimore Museum of Art. Oh. Coming up on June the 5th. That's me. We're going to have a major exhibition opening up featuring the ceramic art of Charles Smith. Mm -hmm. And we may eventually find out what his middle name is. <laughs> maybe we will. At the end of the show, if everybody <laughs> shows up at the end of the show, maybe he'll tell us. <laughs> what that T stands for. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a little <laughs> yeah. bit more about that next <laughs> month, but uh, that's a Facebook post that was out there. And yeah. So I'm, I can now divulge because it's already <laughs> being fed out there. But yeah, the dates are down there. George, you want to tell them the name of your exhibition? Well, the name is uh, Black Hands, I Am. There you go. Uh, mm -hmm. And you would have to pretty well add into the I Am. You know, you get to the creative part. Well, the parts uh, are going to tell who you right, are. Right, right. So and you, the fun thing about it, I don't want to give too much away, but we have some wonderful examples all the way back to Charles being in college. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which will show people how his work and how Charles has taken an idea and what he's done with it and put it together. You so can it's see those little transitions, great, those it's influences. It's going to be a great exhibition. And maybe we can give, show him a couple more little peak samples. But that will be the opening. It will be June the 4th. Mm -hmm. And then the actual show open to the public on June the 5th of this mm -hmm. year and it will run through October the 11th, 2015. Yeah. So this is going to be an, a, a really good show people are going to want to see. I can tell you this, the, the, uh, Charles has some wonderful collectors I've had the opportunity to meet, and they are excited. They can't <laughs> wait to see this. It's going to be a good one. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> put that on your calendars, folks. You don't want to miss this That's exhibition. Right. This is going to be a good one. We'll, we'll have a little bit more of a tease about that next month, I think. So. Yep. Thanks for that promo. Well, you're, you're <laughs> welcome. Hey, you want your money now? It ain't bragging. <laughs> if you can do it, that's, Cash one, of our, that's one of our mottos here at Artstream Live. Well, he's not bragging because he can do it. You ain't <laughs> bragging if you can so do it. That's right. right. If you don't yeah. use it, you lose it. Yeah, we have There's a little, something else going on this past yeah, the, at the week. Yeah. Come on. Well, we'll see. There it goes. Yeah, we had a little uh, <laughs> talk. They've been doing a... Thursday nights at the at the museum. They, mm -hmm. It's open to the public all day Thursday. There's no mission charge, and the museum's up to nine o'clock on Thursday nights. They had a little talk about our, our current Mardi Gras exhibition. It's kind of a going behind the scenes mm -hmm. and what was involved in actually making this show happen and what we have to do. And I'm I'm a I didn't know I was in the Facebook, but they uh, <laughs> had me sharing with folks how we put these Mardi Gras trains on display. What was involved with that? What had to happen to make it? So it was fun. 
Yeah, you famous. And uh, bring that next one up, David. That, that last. Oh, Big Buck <laughs> likes yeah. that. All right, Big Buck. <laughs> Getting a peek over the top there. Very good. But, uh, you know, our Mardi Gras exhibition has been up since November. It's been well attended. It's going to run through the uh, May, the first weekend. And I think Sunday the 3rd is the last day. They're going to have a big event at the end of that to kind of kick it off. Yep. A dramatic conclusion is what they want are calling it. So uh, you still got time to go out and see that if you haven't seen it. It's the art and design of Mardi Gras. And mm -hmm. you, you name it, if it's a Mardi Gras, we got it. Yep. Very good. And there's only one more thing we have. Oh, yes. A special note to close. What? Oh, happy tax day. Yeah. <laughs> Just want everybody to know that in the they, state of Alabama, shh, everything you earn from January 1st to April 9th, Went to Uncle Sam in that's the state. Right. And that's just the state. That's not counting federal. Mm -hmm. well, tax-free yeah, that's day. What is that counting federal, too? That's federal and, and, and Alabama state. taxes. Okay, well, that's good. I tax feel a little better about the state of Alabama. <laughs> yeah. You had me worried. <laughs> one clap. <laughs> oh, no. One clap for the state <laughs> and one <laughs> clap for the government. Well, that was a clap for me. Sorry. But, uh, <laughs> well, everybody, just that was a do slap. what you got to do and pay your fair share. But uh, we or hope more. that was of interest tonight. <laughs> Folks enjoyed the webcast, and anytime they want to get hold of us, how can they get hold of us? Right at the number on the screen right there. That's right. Artstreamlive.com, our uh, webpage, or uh, let's Facebook. See. We Art, got Facebook. Yeah, artstream at gmail.com. Right. Yep. We got our email. Facebook, artstreamlive Facebook. We've got archived <laughs> uh, webisodes up on Ustream and mm -hmm. YouTube. That's so, right. Yeah. So, call in. All right. So I Check think it. we, we got to, you know, it's up to you. The art is cute at art. Mm. We're giving you yes and yes. Yes, yes yeah, and no. Well, yes and no. Right. It depends on your perspective. Right. It depends on what the objective is. Because who your friends are. That's who you, right. yeah. <laughs> who you're talking uh, to. Even <laughs> perspective they thought was cheating at one time. Yeah. Hey, you know. But, uh, you know, it's a tool. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And like I said, if the tool controls you, then you got a problem. I mean, they had, they, had the same, okay. they had the same uh, controversy in, in, in pottery with people using jiggers versus the wheel. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, live and let live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Kitty, when Charles uses that electric wheel and not kicking it with his right leg? I'm not kicking. If I kick something, it won't be that wheel. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Well, we had mentioned woodworking. That's true. We, we are wood, what, when you use a... Should be hand to a lathe. No I, I know. power tool. Yeah, what about a lathe? You can use a pow uh, unpowered lathe That's with true. a kick lathe, but you use a, to do spindles. You use a pattern. Right. Is, is that cheating? If it's cheating? I mean, technically, yeah. some, some people say it is, but it's a traditional way to do yeah, it. Has Charles ever used calipers in his pocket? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Cheetah! <laughs> Cheetah! <laughs> All right. With well, that, <laughs> with that, I guess we'll call it a night. Thank you, everybody, for watching yep. tonight. We're gonna go eat some chicken See. wings. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to cheat and get a few extra. Chicken. Please. Uh -oh, there are big bugs here. All right. See y'all. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>
but she sucked your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you got no footage yet? I don't know if you got any footage yet. <laughs> oh, is that all? Yeah, yeah it's, it's all. Oh. It's recording. No, no, that no. ain't got me long. I'm only talking about like five or six seconds. I oh, that's it. <laughs>